So yeah, we're slowly but surely getting to know more about the Galaxy S24 Ultra. Early rumor actually indicated 18th of January is the potential unveiling date of the Galaxy S24 series. Now there is also a big chance that it will happen on 17th of January rather than 18th, which is fine for us because it's still way earlier than the S23's launch, which actually happened in the second month of that year. So, and the excitement for this phone is getting higher and higher just because this phone is rumored to be one of the most smartest smart AI phone ever. Because it will have a lot of the features of the Pixel 8's AI, but on top of that, it will have even more crazy things. Like the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 for Galaxy chipset, which if you don't know, is gonna be even more powerful than the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 standard model. Now, I have already explained what the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 is gonna be like. In this video, I'm gonna tell you what the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 for Galaxy is gonna be like. But before that, let's look at one Geekbench score of a Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 powered device, which scored 2295 in the single core test and 7560 points in the multi core test. So, you see what I'm trying to say? The overall idea is this is the base Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 performance, and the 8 Gen 3 for Galaxy will be even better than that. Now, what Leaker says that the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 for Galaxy chipset will actually have an octa-core configuration just like the normal Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. It will have one prime Cortex X4 core running at 3.4 GHz, five performance Cortex A720 cores running at a clock speed of 3.15 GHz and 2.96 GHz. And then there are going to be two Cortex A520 cores running at 2.27 GHz. Now, in the earlier benchmarks, we've already seen that the Cortex A720 cores will have two different groups in the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 for Galaxy chipset. One group will run at higher clock speeds than the other group. Even though the leaker hasn't said anything about that, but uh, that is something that we can expect because we have already seen that in the Geekbench result too. So, why not? This Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 for Galaxy chipset will have the Cortex A70 cores running at slightly lower clock speed than the standard Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 chipset, which is a little bit weird that they did it. Maybe it's because of the thermal things or something like that. We just don't know. Anyway, another thing is the efficiency cores are running at even lower clock speed than it is on the standard Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. Now, according to a report by Tipster Ice Universe, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 for Galaxy chipset is expected to feature a GPU clocked at an impressive 1000 MHz. And this is actually higher, about 100 MHz or so higher than the GPU of the standard Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. But on the other hand, if you look at the Exynos 2400, which will actually power the standard Galaxy S24 and S24 Plus in most of the markets except for the Chinese market and the US market, it will have a decker core configuration, a 10 core CPU configuration, 1 plus, 2 plus, 3 plus, 4 CPU configuration. This is where you will see a big difference. The X4 core running at 3.21 GHz, which is much more lower for sure, but there is two Cortex A70 cores running at 2.9 GHz there are going to be three Cortex A70 cores running at 2.59 GHz and four Cortex A520 cores running at 1.96 GHz. The S24 Ultra is also rumored to come with at least 12 GB of RAM for the base model, and the high storage models might even come with 16 GB of RAM. Whereas if you look at the standard models, they are also getting an upgrade to 12 GB for the base and the upgraded storage. And for the storages though, the standard models, the cheaper S24 and S24 Plus, both will start at 256 and will have a 512GB as an option. Really good to hear that there is no 128GB for the cheapest model. Now, all these things aside, there are many more changes. They will all have now satellite connectivity. Plus, all of these devices will have some upgraded displays as well. These displays can go up to 2500 nits of peak brightness which if it's true, it's actually 42% brighter than the Galaxy S23 series, which can only go up to 1,750 nits. Now that is still awesome, but 2,500 nits is actually crazy. But then again, it is reserved for only few amount of pixels. It's not actually for the whole display because that will make the phone go crazy with the temperatures. So no, but also this numbers game is a little stupid because this is actually measured in logarithmic scale, not in linear scale. So the difference between 2500 nits and 2000 nits isn't actually as much as it is between 2000 nits and 1500 nits. 
Even though if you look at the numbers, it's only 500 nits difference. But you see, it's a logarithmic scale. So that's one big thing to keep in mind when you're talking about the brightness. Anyway, this also means that we might even see a better HDR brightness as well. Or maybe even the standard manual brightness will also go higher than it was in the past models. Pretty cool. Anyway, another big thing coming to the S24 Ultra, and it's going to be exclusive, is the titanium frame. Now, I know a lot of people might say Samsung is copying Apple, but no. According to the Elixir, so Samsung is actually planning to introduce this titanium frame to the S24 series for about two years now at this point. But now Samsung is ready to bring this technology to the market. So it's not like they are copying Apple, but they are also doing it at the same time as Apple. That's what you can say. Now, the introduction of a titanium case represents a significant advancement, but it also can be a really costly one too if the yielding rates are not that good. If the yielding rate is low, there could be a big price increase. For example, the aluminum frame currently costs about 20 bucks for each phone. So if they go with premium titanium and the yielding rates are going to be lower, then it can cost four to five times more than that. That's going to be a huge price increase. Now, Samsung's actual goal is to produce about 15 million units of the titanium frames, same number as the current Galaxy S23 Ultra's shipping numbers. Now, titanium actually offers several advantages over the other materials, like it's lighter than steel, but yet it is stronger than aluminum. So it makes it much more ideal for a smartphone frame, but other than Apple, no one has done it. So it will be interesting to see what Samsung going to do with it and how they're going to do it. Because I still think the armor aluminum is fine. Now, also we are hearing that the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra will actually have a strip design for the speaker setup rather than the small little holes that we used to have. Now, the panel size are like this. The S24 Ultra will still have a 6.8 inch screen. S24 Plus will actually have a 6.65 inch screen and the smaller one model will come with a 6.1 inch screen. But the bezels are going to be even more thinner this year for the, the cheaper models. But the S24 Ultra will actually have more flatter display it, the interactive part of the display will be flatter compared to last year's model but the bezels will still be slightly curved and all of these phones will be much more boxier than the current s23 models and the s24 and s24 plus will actually have totally flat sides now other than that there are going to be big changes to the cameras as well the s24 ultra will have 200 megapixel isocell hp2 sx camera with one over 1.3 inch sensor and they're going to be 12 megapixel ultra wide angle camera, a 3x Teleporter 10 megapixel camera from Sony. And then they're going to be ISOCELL GMU sensor, which will work as a 5x Teleporter camera and it's a 48 megapixel sensor. Now, this will actually allow you to have a 10x 12 megapixel photo thanks to sensor crop. And this is the same technology will also be used inside the 200 megapixel ISOCELL HP2SX camera to create lossless photos even up to 4x zoom. That too, even when you're doing videos. So it's pretty cool. But if you want to know more about that zoom thing and about the 200 megapixel camera sensor, I will link down below my recent video on that. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. What do you think about the Galaxy S24 series? And yes, if you want, you can get some crazy cool wallpapers up on my website. I'll link down below. Until the next one, bye and take care.